Coming up in the morning edition, the Office of the Prime Minister responds to blacklisting, Haitians apprehended on the high seas, and the Haitian embassy closed due to civil unrest. It's the beginning of a new week. Let's make it a productive one. Good morning and welcome to the Morning Edition. I'm Jiminita Swain. We start now with a look at how weather is shaping up this Monday morning. And for that, we turn to Chief Meteorologist Basil Dean. Good morning, Basil. Well, good morning, Jiminita. We're off to a beautiful start weather-wise. Now, Zedna's Tower Camp is showing our near cleft skies overlooking our Nassau Harbor. And as we go to our satellite picture, we can also see high pressure suppressing cloud development. One or two little small packets of uh, clouds. Outside of our studios, we have a temperature of 73 degrees, relative humidity on the rich side, 94%. South southeast winds at about 8 miles per hour. Biometric pressure, 1,018.0 millibars, that's 30.09 inches, and it is rising. Temperatures around the islands this morning, picking up some 73s in Marsh, Arbabaco, Green Tolkien, also Freeport and Grand Bahama at 73 degrees, 74. In the Berry Islands, Alistair Bimini, 73 degrees, 77. In Harbor Island, Roxanne, Elutra, 76. Alistair, Catala, 78. Stanley Key at 76. Camps based on Andros and Fresh Creek and Central Islanders both reporting 75 degrees this morning. San Salvador's at 78. Rum Key at 77 degrees as we take you into Clarence Town, Long Island, Crooked Island, Betsy Bay, and Ragged Island. They're all at 78 degrees. Ackland, 79. Magic Town, Inagua, 78 degrees. And the Turks and Caicos Islands at 79 degrees. Your boating forecast for today for all areas, we're going to have a southeast flow at 10 to 15 knots in the wave flies 2 to 4 feet over the ocean. That's going to do it for your first look at weather the morning edition. Stay tuned. Your forecast for today tonight, still ahead. Well, thanks so much, Basil. As you said, it's a beautiful day shaping up outside, but of course we want to know how our morning traffic commute is going to go. So standing by is, of course, our Vaughn Albury. Good morning, Vaughn. Hello, Germanito. Welcome. This morning we are on East Street near the intersection of Shirley Street. With me, Sergeant Jerome Thompson of the Royal Bahamas Police Force. What was traffic like over the weekend? Good morning to you. Good morning, Bahamas. Good morning. We had a number of traffic accidents over the weekend, 17 in total, six of which involves accidents with injuries. Um, also, just to uh, give you a heads up, we had an overturned vehicle on Samila Butler Highway, and luckily none of the passengers were injured, all, dri all driver. Well, that's good to hear. Uh, we, we are on East Street. I'd like you to explain to our viewers, right here, I'm going down Glendon, right here, is this a legal parking spot? Where should persons park? Well, this is a legal parking spot because um, it's uh, t at least 20 feet away from the from the curb, and there's no no parking signs um, areas in this area, uh, at this location. But our uh, persons, there are limited amount of free parking spaces in the downtown area, um, and persons will find themselves sometimes being towed parking in. Um, different areas. A lot of people complain about being told when they think that they're in a legitimate parking spot. So what would you recommend to persons who want to park in the downtown area? Well, in the downtown area, uh, you have uh, designated spots and the, the parking are outlined it and, and uh, visible and, and, and uh, it shows you um, exactly what type of parking it is. Whether it is a, ta a taxi stand, whether there's a loading zone, or where there's a handicapped spot. Um, persons, they will normally park in these areas, park in the loading zone for longer than the, a, a lot of time, which is 10 minutes, and just go about their business. I, I would suggest to those persons to either park in the uh, old park, or uh, post office, post office yeah. or they could find a parking where they could pay $3. <laughs> Did you hear that? There are a limited number of parking spots here, so Sergeant Thompson recommends that you park only in those spots that are designated. So, good news. Thank you very much. We're back to you in the studio, Jim Anita. Thanks so much, Juan. Now to other news this morning. The Office of the Prime Minister has released a statement expressing displeasure in the country's recent blacklisting, giving an explanation on how the country became blacklisted. 
In 2018, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, the Honorable K. Peter Turnquist, and the Minister of Financial Services, Trade and Industry and Immigration, the Honorable Brent Simonet, met with the EU, OECD, and FATF officials in France and Brussels, Belgium. As a result of these meetings and a close working relationship between the Bahamas and the EU, OECD, and the FATF, the government passed a package of legislation in December 2018 to satisfy various requirements and commitment. And in early January 2019, Prime Minister Dr. the Honorable Hubert Minnis and Attorney General Carl Bethel met with the head of the Taxation and Customs Union, which concentrates on issues related to base erosion and profit shifting, or BEPS, which generally relates to the way in which a broad range of financial services are provided in and from the Bahamas as an international financial services center, thereby eroding the tax base or higher tax jurisdictions. Failure to meet requirements by the Taxation and Customs Union within the EU may lead this body to recommend to the EU of Finance Ministers that the Bahamas be placed on a blacklist of countries that are non-cooperative for tax purposes. The works by the Minister Administration over the last several months has produced very positive results, especially as it relates to the 40 listed requirements of the FATF. The Bahamas was placed on the FATF watch list back in October 2018 when it only satisfied 17 of the requirements. 40 FATF criteria. By year end, the Bahamas was essentially compliant with 30 of the 40 requirements, a record similar to the United States. More another round of apprehensions on the high seas of Haitian migrants. The Royal Bahamas Defense Force apprehended a Haitian sloop west of Compass Key in the central Exoma chain around 1245 Sunday afternoon with 64 migrants on board. The apprehension was the result of a coordinated effort between the defense and police forces, OPAT and the U.S. Coast Guard with the assistance of concerned citizens. Defense Force officials plan to release further details upon confirmation. While the Minister of Financial Services, Trade and Industri Industry and Immigration, the Honorable Brent Simonet, confirmed that deportations to the politically unstable Haiti have ceased for the time being due to the turmoil currently facing that country. An official statement was released yesterday evening from the Office of the Prime Minister confirming the information. International reports state that Haitian residents have been protesting and rioting in the streets against government for more than a week now. Minister Simonet says officials will still remain alert for Haitian nationals attempting to enter the Bahamas illegally. They're also going to be very vigilant as to persons trying to arrive in this country illegally. So we'll, over the next few days and weeks, we'll be monitoring the situation to make sure it's, that we are, the whole issue is treated as humanely as possible under the circumstances. Now, with the turmoil in Haiti, Simonet says there's a possibility that the number of Haitians attempting to come to the country may increase, something officials have considered by increasing their patrols. He says steps are being taken to accommodate additional migrants at a temporary detention center in the southern Bahamas should their numbers increase. The first port of entry usually is in Agua, and therefore we hope to be able to, in the event of, of any sightings or landings, uh, of vessels uh, and people will try and uh, process them in Anagua to avoid bringing them to Nassau. Well, the Bahamas has recalled its diplomatic personnel from the Embassy of the Bahamas in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. The move comes after days of political unrest and rioting on that island, with Haitians demanding the resignation of Haitian President Juvenel Moise and Prime Minister Jean-Henri Siont over allegations of corruption. In a statement, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs notes that personnel have been recalled for consultation due to the unrest in the country, and the embassy will be closed until further notice. No consular services will be available during the embassy's closure. Members of the public are being urged to contact the Ministry of Foreign Affairs at 242-827-3106 in the case of an emergency. The ministry further advises that it will monitor the situation in Haiti and the embassy will reopen once the situation on the ground stabilizes. While there's more to come, you're watching the Morning Edition. If you are building or renovating, and if you want a one-stop shop, then we buy, you sell. Your windows and doors specialist, 
is the place for the highest impact, highest quality, fully laminated hurricane impact windows and doors, lifelong lasting PVC frame with steel in the frame, non-rust mechanism throughout the frame. We also have the best prices on porcelain, plank and mosaic tiles. Visit We Buy You Sell in the old Hasty's Tile Building on Robinson Road or call us at 327-6427 or 698-1140. It's time to get some love from your bank. Make your 2019 financial resolutions a reality by getting up close and personal with your friends at Fidelity. Make it a date with free financial planning, debt consolidation, and an ASO savings account. Plus, discounted fees and a chance to enter to win exciting prizes like all-inclusive weekend getaways or dinner for two. Terms and conditions apply. Fidelity, we're good for you. Welcome back. Blood, it's a life-saving gift and in an effort to help those in need of blood, the Rotaract Club of East Nassau held a blood drive Saturday at the Mallard Marathon. The club's community service director is Ryan Winters. This is our third annual event, actually. Um, so we, we, we're doing this in partnership with the Rotary Club of Grand Cayman, as well as Rotary Club of New Kingston. Um, this is something that we hope to continue to do in the future, and we hope that we can make a dent in the supply that's needed. So we felt it's important to do. Well, Doctors Hospital phlebotomist Marissa King says they try to have a supply of blood in stock in the event of serious incidents that occur. While blood donor Keith Bethel told us why he chose to give the gift of life. It's like a parachute. If you don't have it when you need it, then it's no use to you. And what we do here at Doctors Hospital, we try to do corporate blood drives as well as try to do in-house blood drives just to keep the flow going so that we can keep up our power values here at the hospital in the event we do have an emergency. And like I said, it's very important for persons to come and donate on a regular basis so that we can keep that flow going in the event of an emergency, like I said. We always hear about people needing blood donations due to different illnesses or accidents. Um, and I think this is one of the real concrete ways that you can actually literally give of yourself to other people. And so I decided to come down today and see how I can help out. Well, it may be a bit colorful, but if you look deeper, there are uniquely designed amenities and a soccer field nestled in the inclusive playground made with love and discarded tires of all sizes by the team of Mega Merges for the energetic students of the Centerville Primary School to explore. Owner of the Mega Merges, Candice Marshall, says the playground will allow students to be the best version of themselves. Every child no matter what their ability is, no matter what their background is, they would be able to enjoy this space because this space is supposed to be an oasis for them, an oasis away from, even though this is at school, but an oasis away from school and a way for them to decompress from their own lives because children got problems too, you know, and so this is what the space is and the inclusive portion of that is taking into consideration the entire child and creating a space that they can live, grow, express their own ideas. Well, Marshall says to make the inclusive playground more environmentally friendly, the team used about 400 tires and several hundred pallets and regular wood to grab the attention of the students. Principal Shianda Maycock says the playground has had a great impact on all students despite their abilities and she later told us how the partnership materialized. We realize that many students are different physically, they have different challenges. We have a student here that has a physical d disability, but we want our children to have acceptance. We want to foster acceptance. We want them to realize that even though we're different, everybody has a contribution. They are Candace Marshall with Mega Mergers, and she wanted to do something with the existing playground that was not being utilized. And what she did caught the attention of persons abroad, and they contacted her, and they told her that they wanted to do something, and she suggested Centerville Primary. And it's a beautiful partnership because she's a part of our school family, her children are here, and she is making it better for not only her children, but the entire school. 
Well, meanwhile, Maycock says the students will get the opportunity to take full advantage of the inclusive playground in an effort to boost their social development skills. Well, of course, it's a time for sports now, and joining it's me now is weekend, Charles man. Fisher. It's a busy week ahead. The Hugh Campbell basketball tournament tips off today. We had a busy weekend with Montague. You were out there. Yes, and I since popped you out. told me yesterday that you were coming to work this morning, I woke up extra happy this morning <laughs> because I'm pleased to be working with you, LaDonna's on vacation. LaDonna, take an extra week, just, please. He's just a little too happy, <laughs> but sports is up next with Charles Fisher. There's more on the morning edition. <laughs> February 18th through 25th to compete for the trophy and bragging rights. ZNS Network will be there with all the action live and online to scores of fans. If you need to share your business with thousands of excited young viewers and listeners, then call the ZNS Sales Department at 502-3800. Get in on the excitement of Hugh Campbell Basketball. Good morning and welcome to Sports on a beautiful Monday. I'm Charles Fisher. Montague came alive this weekend with the Catch Me If You Can Sailing Massacre. This one was dubbed This for Barber, who passed away last month and his spirit was felt as Clyde Rolls. Skipper, the Lady Natalie, the victory. He held off the Southern Cross, Red Stripe and Good News. We were sailing all evening, they were not going to catch us. Because the wind was coming down, we had to sail, we had to write, everything was right. The crew, I had three skippers on the boat with me, three captains. But I was the, the, the principal captain, but I had three good sailors. I had Joba, I had Josh, I had, I had a bunch of good sailors, and the crew members handled the boat extremely well. So that is the, 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 the remedy for success, for winning. The word we got was that that's the most crowd the boat has, has at least the event has ever seen in in the 32 years. We did not see class race um, because the debt was was so dramatic about 10, 11 days ago. We you know went through this trauma, on it. but we were able to pull this off. Now the National Fence Intruders staving off elimination in New Providence Volleyball Association Men's Championship action on Sunday. They were not ready to go home, but they had to have a fight against the defenders. They won in five sets, 25-9, 25-16, 19-25, 22-25, 20, and 15-8. We did really was, uh, we stuck to the plan. Um, the first two games that we played, you know, we were a little bit messy. Um, so for this game, we were a little more organized. You know, we met last night. Uh, we went through the rotations, you know, look on the tapes. We made the adjustment that we came out victorious tonight. Bahamas Bowling Federation with their elections last night, and there is a new president. Tyrone Knowles defeated incumbent Sonnet Lockhart 68 votes to 46. Knowles' entire slate going in. Uh, for me personally, uh, first of all, uh, we will do a complete assessment of where we are as, as a federation and a part of that re assessment would be to determine what our strengths, what our weaknesses, what our opportunities are and to build upon those strengths, um, mitigate those, those things that are, that are not impacting the federation and to come up with ideas that can, that can be used to, be, to build a sport. One of the things that I'm proposing to do right after the election is to do a one-day uh, conclave so we can come up with, uh, with a strategic plan that have all of the, uh, the goals, strategies, and timelines expected. Uh and the Hugh Campbell Basketball Tournament tips off today at the AF Alley Gym. The championship game will be held next week, Monday. The ball will start bouncing at 5 o'clock this afternoon with four games on the schedule 
And unlike in the years past, the official opening ceremony will be held this morning at 10 o'clock. Highlighting excellence through perfection and team spirit. That's our opening ceremony. And we invite the general public to come down and celebrate with us in our 37th year. Like is said, this is the grandfather of all tournaments. So therefore, this year will be no exception. Our opening ceremony will be filled with excitement, cheerleading groups, special guests, and most of all, all of our teams will be present from throughout the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos Islands. And let's get it on. Once again, the opening ceremony, 10 o'clock this morning, then the ball will start bouncing at 5 o'clock. The family island teams will start playing ball later on in the week and ZNS Total Sports will have you covered from the opening tip until the final buzzer next week Monday when the championship will be held at the Kendall G L I 6 gym. Hey! Long time no see. You hear me? Long time no see. All fish, stew fish, stew conch. I love it all. Tourists come here to take our tours, experience our sun, sand, and sea, and they also spend money around town. I used to see a bunch of hogfish around here, but nowadays, I hardly see any. You protect one area, the fish do they think, make a bunch of babies that spread all over the sea. What's the problem? If we protect certain parts of our sea, it keeps all parts working right. I was against that phrase. But knowing what I know now, I totally agree on having marine protected areas. I support marine protected areas. We support, support marine, marine protected, protected areas. areas. Look for Bahamas Protected on Facebook. Sign the petition. Sign the petition. <laughs> Best of sports world. Tonight. It's the OT with yours truly, Charles Fisher. Buddy Hill and the Kings have their. Buddy Hill seems to be having the best season of his career. He had 32 points the other night. It was a bit disappointing, Shawnee Miller not winning the IWF World Female Athlete of the Year. The high school rankings will soon be out. Top and knuckle, the defending champion, CC Sweeting, they are always there. Who will it be this year? Each Monday on 1540 AM and 104.5 FM, it's the OT with yours truly, Charles Fisher. Hey y'all, what's up? Hey, what's up? What y'all get? Mm. Listen, I've been waiting to march down some logs here. Hi, I'm Matthew. I will be you guys waiting today. Can I take your order? Oh, uh, I've been queuing some for some group of dread. Y'all <sighs> see this? Uh, see, this ain't gonna work. Gondo. But how do? Don't leave our children with no fish in their future. Protect our sea. Protect our way of life. Protect the Bahamas. To learn how you can help, find us on Facebook at Bahamas Protected. See the future. The Bahamas Bureau of Standards and Quality, BBSQ, is paving the way for the development of a national quality infrastructure based on international standards and best practices to revolutionize the way we do business. BBSQ provides quality assurance systems and works with various industries to promote standardization and certify the quality of goods and services across the Bahamas. BBSQ, quality is our standard. This public service announcement was brought to you by the Bahamas Bureau of Standards and Quality in conjunction with the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas.
In our final look at weather, an area of high pressure will influence our weather over the next uh, several days. And as you can see on our satellite picture, very few clouds. So there is a pocket of cloudiness just to the southwest of Andros, also down in the extreme southeast Bahamas. But elsewhere, we have near clear skies. Our forecast for today calls for partly sunny and warm conditions, slight chance of a brief shower. Your high temperature today getting up to a warm 82 degrees. And tonight, we're looking at a few clouds, still a bit on the mild side, but a low temperature getting down to 71 degrees. The extended weather forecast, 80s during the daytime and your nighttime temperatures, they're going to remain in the upper 60s to low 70s over the next uh, several days. Jim Anita. Thanks, Basil. Well, that's going to do it for the morning edition. But before we go, we would like to wish our Karen Miller a happy belated birthday. Hope you had a good one, Karen. Make sure to join us this evening at 6 o'clock for the start of a national newscast. I'm Jiminy Swain. Make it a productive week, Bahamas.